Welcome to Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Uh, usually when uh, you're watching or are listening to Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, normally uh, it, we, we, we interview guests, but we don't do that all the time. You know, there's, there's, there's times that we just jump into the world uh, that is the Rick and Bubba show, and there's a tremendous amount of history uh, that goes with this show now, 28 years that we've been doing this. T- today we're going to talk about one of the – and we've had, a, you know, you think about 9-11 – and us being on the air, and we've talked about that, and, and maybe even do a podcast about that when that comes back around, on what it was like to be on the air during that during that time. Uh, but we had a very traumatic event that took place uh, January the nineteenth uh, of two thousand eight. Uh, so uh, the show had been going for fourteen years at that point, and um, so we had gone into uh, Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. Of course, if you're you know catching this podcast. Around the 19th, you realize that's where we are now, and every year this comes around, it's quite a marker for us. Um, And uh, I was speaking at an event uh, in uh, Pigeon Forge in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, uh, when I got the awful news that um, uh, our youngest son uh, had drowned and uh, while I was away, and uh, he did not survive. They were not able to, to revive him. And so today we, we, we want to kind of jump into what it was like for, for the – the, the team because I mean in the middle of all this we're all friends uh, we're we're co- we're coworkers uh, and and you're you're trying to look at the personal side of it but for these guys uh, you know when I go into the mode of husband and father and and all the different things that that come come with it uh, you guys were receiving this news uh, and you go from the horror of just hey this is your friend. Uh, to people saying, "What are y'all gonna do Monday?" Yeah, and uh, so we were gonna kind of focus with the, the 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 how it affected the show and some of the things you guys went through uh, from a team standpoint. So, um, first of all, uh, Bubba, we'll start with you. I guess I guess you remember how you found out. Yeah, let, let me set the stage yeah. too a little bit because yeah. I think that's important to understand the mindset at yeah. the time. And th- this is still tough to talk about. Yeah, like, it it's is. just. Yeah, it's... Um, I can't imagine for you. Um, but in the year 2007, we changed companies. Right. Uh, our contract was up. We just went to, to Cox Radio, uh, New Deal. They had offered to build us a new studio in that deal, which became the, uh, the Broadcast Blast and Teleport. It was going to take about a year to get that built the way we wanted it built. It was a million-dollar you know, facility. And uh, we, we had changed, and, and we had the company, and we were growing, and Cox Radio was, uh, you know, one of the top companies in the country. Uh, and the fact they wanted us and wanted us to go on, you know, it was, it was a good deal for us. It was a good move for us, for our families. Uh, the show was growing. I mean, we, yeah. were, we were adding outlets. Um, you know, it, it was just a good growth time. I mean, it was, it was a very positive time in the show. And we're about to go in this new studio. And it's, a, you know, a, a Saturday afternoon, very late. It was already dark. And, I, you know, we were hanging out at the house. Everything was fine. And Betty comes running in and says, um, uh, I just got a phone call from Rick. And the phone's dropping out and something's wrong. And he, something about Sherry and the hospital. And, and I looked and my, I had a missed call from you. And it was, I guess the signal was so bad it didn't even ring. Yeah. And um, so then I started trying to call you, and we couldn't get a connection. Right. Couldn't get, and I thought, what in the world? And then we did get a connection, but it was broken up. And I got from you that that there'd been an accident, and Sherry and and Bronner was involved, and and that you you were very concerned about Sherry, and you want me to try to get to Sherry, and you also were trying to get home, and you know. So then, but but the phone's still cutting out, so we can't get the complete message. So I told Betty, I said, let's get dressed. We're, we're going downtown. I'm not even sure what hospital. I don't know what's happened. I don't have a complete picture. We we're trying to get a hold of a pilot to get you back. And on the way to the hospital, we got word that, that they had a plane and all that had been taken care of, and they were, they were going to retrieve you. But we still wasn't completely sure about what was going on. But I know you were very concerned about Sherry. Yeah. And – uh, as we made our way down, the, the picture became a little bit clear that there'd been an accident at your house. And when we got there, Sherry was, was uh, in a room. We couldn't get to her, uh, and she was waiting to talk to you. And um, 
about the time we got there, uh, a couple of the men that were there, and you, there was quite a few people there, you know, friends of yours, uh, church members and whatever. Yeah. And we were going to the airport to pick you up. And uh, the the guys going over there were, you know, the, still there was confusion about, what you know, it was just we couldn't understand what was going on, what the deal was. They was concerned about you. And uh, I told them, I said, look, Rick's solid. He's going to be fine. Okay, Rick will handle this. He's going to be okay because they didn't know what kind of condition you were going to be in. And um, we got there and and we hugged for a minute and and you said, get me to Sherry. Yeah. And we headed back. And uh, I know you two guys, uh, you and Sherry talked and um, there was quite a gathering outside. And, you know, everybody wanted to do something. We didn't know what to do. That's right. Yeah. Other than just pray for you guys at that moment. And, and there's no doubt that was it, Speedy. How, how did you? How did you get to the point where we are now, where Bubba is? Uh, <clears throat> I got a call. I was. I'll never forget this. I was standing in our kitchen. I think I had been hunting that day, uh, and I got the call. And like Bubba, on our end, there was just a lot of confusion on yeah. on where we were. Uh, we knew it was serious, uh, and and how do we get to where we can get to help? Uh, and just trying to to. Uh, get those forces together and get to where we needed to be. That was our main focus and telling family members and, and all this kind of stuff. There was just a lot of confusion there, but everybody was hurrying to try to come to y'all's side and, yeah. and help along on side of this. And I was in the car going to, uh, you know, to the plane where, where you had landed and, and I'll never forget that. It was just like, you know, Hey guys, we got to hold it together for Rick you know, because we were all emotional as well, uh, and we knew that you were going to be solid. We we knew just what kind of man you were, and and we did know that you wanted to get to Sherry. So that was our effort, and and so uh, you know, you got in the car, and to Bubba's point, you said, "Just get me to Sherry. I, I got to get to Sherry." And when we got to the hospital, I was overwhelmed with how many people that were already there, uh, and you were like, "Hey, I I just I need to get to her. I can't get bogged down. I love everybody, but I got to get to her." That was your main focus. Uh, and then it's almost like once you got to the hospital and you got to, sh- to Sherry, all of us guys were like, oh, you know, he's here. Right. That was almost he, like you know, the goal of that night. You yeah, know. yeah. He's like, oh, God, okay, he's here. He's with her. And then it just really – because everything's so busy. It's busy, busy. Let's get here. Let's get there. Let's get in the car. Let's get to the airport. Let's pick him up. And then it just – then then it really hit, hey, why we're here. Right. And it was pretty overwhelming. So I, I know that uh, Adler, you were not on the staff at that time, but you, uh, you, you had just interned with us, right? You were still in college, correct? That's right, Rick. Um, I was actually in between my internship and coming to work for you guys when uh, when this occurred, and uh, I got a text from my family that said, uh, you know, something something's happened, and so we need you guys to pray, and. Um, because my parents were at the hospital yeah. with, with Sherry yeah, yeah. before you had gotten there, yeah. and uh, they told they told us later as as we were able to get together, uh, they told the story of you arriving at the hospital uh, and it bringing a level of peace to the situation. And um, in one of my classes at, at Auburn, the this this it came up because uh, it was a national national news story. And uh, I was able to kind of just because people were speculating on all kinds of things, and I was able to kind of just calm the thing down and be like, actually, guys, this is what happened. And uh, I was able to tell the story and share with my class what kind of peace that comes with knowing Jesus, and what a couple uh, looks like that puts Jesus at the center uh, of their relationship. And I've never, never forgotten that. How uh, you know you talk about the triangle when you have you know a husband and a wife they're the base of the triangle and as long as you guys are aiming towards Jesus you'll come together and and that's how you have a strong a strong marriage and a strong relationship and i've never forgotten that and um now as i have a 1 year old yeah hmm. uh, i've gained a new perspective on this whole thing as well you know and um i i told you Rick we were talking about it that a lot of days i'll think to myself Rick and Sherry got this day yeah you know um and it just uh, makes me thankful for every day that I have, you know. So yeah, well, that's one of the things that Bubba and I were talking about. Bubba, you've talked about this before with with Bronner. Is that was kid number five mm-hmm. for me, and and I've heard you say this before. I probably had more fun because you know when you're when it's yeah. old, when oh, it's yeah. old hat to you, mm-hmm. you know you're you're now <laughs> like look this. I know this is a celebration. This is fun. 
I don't know how it happened. I'm almost sure that you were there before my family was when Bronner was born. It seemed like you and I were hanging out yeah, down there before know, everybody got there. I, and I, was, I, I haven't figured out how that happened. Yeah, because I, I know when Brooks was born, there was, there was a big crowd. Oh, yeah. A big crowd there. Yeah. And, you know, there was some excitement with that. Oh, and, yeah. and it all yeah. worked out. Right. And uh, But when, when Bronner was born, we were off for some reason. Yeah, it was a Memorial Day weekend. And yeah. we both were at the hospital. And I remember us being there alone and goofing off. I, me too. And I'm not. And, and how I don't, do we end up in that I don't situation? Know, I don't even remember. Maybe Sherry was in the prep room and we couldn't go in. Something. Or something, something. Or your family hadn't got there yet. No. And I remember quite a bit of time us just sitting around mm-hmm. talking. And, you know, at that point, uh, it sounds funny, but a lot of times, me and you don't sit around one on one and talk. No, because it's usually people around. It doesn't happen. It's usually people around. We're in some group setting of some kind. And, right. and we were having yeah. fun. And it was a. Re- I remember it being very relaxed. It was, and yeah. it was just you, you felt blessed to be involved in this and another baby coming in and. Uh, I know, was like forty. I said, yeah, things, yeah, things right. were going yeah. good, and uh, yeah. you know it was just a, it, it. It was really a fun day when he was born. Yeah, and you know Sherry told me at my fortieth birthday party. Yeah, and uh, because she was like, you know, to ha- let's have an, let's try to see if we can have one more, you know, basically before you get too old, <laughs> and uh, and of course she told me on my birthday that she was uh, pregnant, hmm. and of course I made the joke. Now I'm going to be white trash because that's number right. five, right. and uh, and we and, used, it, and it was a big party, yeah, and it was a big yeah. party, and we right. were celebrating, and <laughs> we're out there dancing, and she's looking at me, and she said, I want to wish you a happy 40th birthday, and I said, okay, she said, I have a, a surprise for you. And I'm like, well, the party, you, you know, she put together right. a big party. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and she Down at get, work play. And it? I said, so what is the gift? She said, you're about to be white trash. <laughs> and Ooh. I said, what? <laughs> and I was like, what? And and so we found out. So it was joyful. And um, uh, when you come back, and we come back, I'll, I'll talk about, Bubba mentioned something in passing, and I'll talk about what made this this event also. There's so many aspects of it. And then we're going to talk about what happened with these guys and who was all on the team then? Who are are basic? They eventually they're going to uncomfortably be asked, "What are y'all doing Monday?" Uh, you know, because we know Rick's not coming back. So mm-hmm. what, what what's going to be the state of the show? How's the programming going to go? Uh, and we'll kind of unpack all that. This historic day, January the nineteenth, two thousand eight, and the week that followed when we continue on Rick and Bubba University the podcast. All right, so it's, it's it's significant to mention this this one part, Bubba, that we talked about with all of our different kids and and their births and the celebrations that that has been here. So uh, so Brooks, who is uh, you know Bronner's big brother and big love on the show, uh, he was the first child that, that Sherry and I had together uh, biologically. Sherry had been an incredible stepmother uh, to uh, Brandy and. And Blake and and was in their lives when they were uh, they were four and five, and she'd been you know part of their lives the entire time. So they were they were you know big brothers and big sisters. And when Sherry was pregnant with Brooke, she was very very excited. And Sherry was a bit of a health nut. She says I ruined that <laughs> for her, and she could not have done anything more perfectly. And all the doctors were talking about, hey, this is how you do a pregnancy and and whatever. Well, when when the time came for for Brooks's birth. Uh, we went to the hospital thinking that we had all the time in the world, and, and you'll see why this is significant when you when you point to what happened with Bronner. And so at this point, I had been a, a follower of Christ uh, in, in, since 96 for three years, uh, so I was still relatively new. I'd, I'd always been a believer. I was never agnostic or anything like that, but, but I was just kind of a cultural Christian. It, it was not the center of my life, and so I'm about three weeks, uh, three years into following Christ, and and Sherry and I, uh, you know, being radically changed through our marriage and our redemption, and uh, but I'm still kind of new to it. I mean, I'm, I'm still only three years in, and I got you know, and we're all learning, and we still continue to learn to this day. But um, so, uh, what we would find out is Sherry uh, had an abruption that kind of came out of nowhere. They gave her pitocin to try to get labor started because the water had already broke. And when they gave her Pitocin, she had some sort of horrible reaction to it, mm. and it went from zero contractions to the kind of contractions you have right before the baby's born, and there was no in-between. So when that happened, that caused an, uh, an abruption of the placenta. And they look at me, and everybody's running crazy, and, and, I, and there's no family there yet because we think we have hours. Right. And everybody starts running. They said, we have to do an emergency C-section. I'm like, what? 
And they, they said, yeah, uh, we, we believe the baby is cut off to oxygen and Sherry may be bleeding mm-hmm. internally. We have to do an emergency C-section. And I remember feeling so bad, you know, because Sherry had looked forward to this moment. So, you know, they all visioned it in their minds. And instead of her, she and I being in there going, you know, let's, let's work through this, they're putting a mask over her face and they're knocking her out. Yeah. And I just remember the look on her face of, T- this I can't. Th- but then you focus on let's get the baby here. Yeah. Let's be sure, yeah, let's you're be okay. sure everybody's mm-hmm. safe. And uh, you know we're not trying to have a fairy tale. The, 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 as we know, and we're talking about today, the world doesn't always go that way. But I remember, and praise God, uh, they they got to the baby in time, and they said Sherry's bleeding was minimal. And I remember looking inside because I remember when the doctor was standing out there, and I had my scrubs on, and I was like, "This is not how this goes." And I really don't know what to do with myself. Do I come in on an emergency C-section? Do I stand out here? I don't know what to do here. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the doctor said, you need to pray. That's what mm-hmm. you need to do. So I did. And, and of course, you, and, and this is that story you want. This is when you pray and it goes the way you want it to go. Right. You know what I mean? And so uh, when we say your will be done, not mine, we have to really think about, do we really mean that? You know? And so I didn't know enough to say your will be done, not mine. At that point, I was just praying that they didn't die, and uh, and so um, they didn't, as you all know. And if you're a follower of the show, if not, then you know Brooks is uh, twenty, about to be twenty three years old. So the doctor points at the baby, Brooks, and he thumbs up. And he's got his mask on, and then he points to Sherry, and he thumbs up. He said they're going to be fine. So I step out in the hall because they're getting Brooks cleaned up. And they're about to hand him to me. Poor Sherry, she's she's knocked out. She's asleep, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I got to spend some precious time with Brooks while I was waiting on her to wake up. So I just said, I begin to praise God. My the prayer you saved my wife, you saved my son. I knew enough that he was the giver and taker of life. I knew that, and I just remember in my spirit, just uh, that you know sometimes, and I know when people hear us talk about this as followers of Christ, well, y'all hear God talking. Hmm. Well, it's not always audible, but you, 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 in your spirit, you hear yeah. the Holy Spirit. What if they had died? I remember just that that jumping in my spirit so clear. What if they had died? Would I be any less great? And I thought, oh no, no, no. You know, I, I give you praise yeah. no matter what because I I didn't have to prove that. You know? Right. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. But in but in His grace and mercy, you see that there's preparation on your three. That now your twelve. Nine years from now, we're going to come back to this, and it's going to go different. So this next nine years, i got to prepare you for the next time we're here. And you think I wasn't thinking about that in that time when I was driving? I was going, well, I remember that conversation. Yep. Wow. So so anyway, so um, the the Lord always, if we're paying attention, is teaching us for, for the things that are in front of us. And, of course, without him, we can't do it. But so so we have the, the bad news this time with Bronner. And I, y'all got me to the hospital, and I'm there with Sherry. And I've talked about that moment many times, so in the podcast we won't go back and revisit that, but we've talked about that a lot <clears throat> because I want to hear from you, you guys' perspective more and to hit some things we've never talked about. So um, you're, you're there. When does the, the – I know the conversation you guys were not looking forward to because y'all, y'all, y'all told me to go do what I needed to do, and I'll always be thankful for that, but, but you guys – we're going to figure out the rest of it. As you mentioned, Bubba, we're at a very transitional time of our show. The show's doing really well, but we're making some changes. And now when the co-host is out for something that is tragic, it's not something like, well, he's sick, he'll be back. And you guys are looking at a Monday show waiting on you. Well, Rick, you, you two, after you met, you came out and addressed the group at the hospital, and you, you made it very clear what had happened. And you told us to, to go home, pray for your family, and, uh, you know, you, you kind of cleared up all the areas because I think all of us there was still hoping someone was going to come out and say, Bronner made it. Yeah. We were able to revive it. Yeah. All my friends and, that were working, you guys too, y'all all thought that was going to be, yes. that was still possible right. to be the ending. Correct. Because, again, and you can't help, I don't, I don't think, because we live in the physical world, Things were going good. I, I want to underline it again, and oh, yeah. it, and and I've used this analogy before because it's the only thing it's, it's what I relate to with my professional training. It, it was a giant circuit breaker. Right. You know, the lights are on, the, everything's going great. All of a sudden, the power goes off, and you're like, "What happened? What what did you know? Were we doing something wrong? 
Right. Did we get things out of order? Uh, were we having success in this world and we took our eyes off God? Sure. You, you start, that's, you know, that's the internal questions mm-hmm. you start asking. Well, it's time to evaluate. And, yeah. Yeah. and, and I don't, I, and I know, I don't think that um, prosperity and success necessarily comes all, it, it's not a, a barometer of your walk with God. Okay. Because no. there, there's, there's times you're blessed that you certainly don't deserve it, and there's times that you pay a price that you certainly feel like you don't deserve it. But um, a lot of times they do track, mm-hmm. and you have to review that. And, and you know, Job is one of my favorite uh, stories in the Bible, one of my favorite books. And you, you start thinking about that because you have questions. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's I think there's a way you approach God with legitimate questions, and there's a way you don't. Right. You, you don't approach God demanding answers like you are owed an answer. But I think it's fine to have questions and yeah. say, you know, Lord, I, I don't understand this. Show me where we're going with this. Show me what we're supposed to learn. And I think we were all dealing with that. And uh, Yeah, I even said that in the plane because keep, now, you know, I've been a follower of Christ for 12 years, not three and I sat down in the plane, and I can still see that full moon, which, by the way, it's weird. It's a full moon again this week. Yeah. And I looked out, and I saw the moon where it was supposed to be on that plane. And I had driven there, so it's not like I'd flown there. So everything had changed on how I was getting home. And I saw the moon, and I literally said out loud in the plane, what are you trying to teach me? Yeah. Because because mm-hmm. I think, you know, you and start I, I thinking. I think that's the, hey, why, man, the right way to don't let me it. Hey, Don't right. let me miss mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Right. And, uh, well, just like you think about the Apostle Paul, he, he finally – makes the conversion, and then you hear Ananias hearing from God, go tell Paul all he must suffer for me. Yeah. And you know, and, and, and so it's, mm-hmm. it, it's not a, if you do everything right, you don't suffer, and if you do everything wrong, you suffer. There's too many examples in Scripture that counter that move, but you're right, you have to start running an assessment. And, and you know, we're, tr- we're still trying to process this. Mm-hmm. And, and Speedy and I had some conversations, and, and we talked with the other guys, and you know, uh, we're getting, as you were, bombarded with people wanting to know what happened. Right. Uh, because the word is getting out. Right. And, uh, you know, we're trying to, to answer those appropriately. Uh, TV stations, newspapers are wanting to do interviews because of the job we have. Uh, they're wanting to do live things. And, all, and we're trying to, to handle those the best we can. I spent a large uh, part of Sunday afternoon doing TV interviews, yeah. and and explaining that, and and the point we wanted to to explain it in the right way. We wanted it to to for people to understand what was really going on. And I wanted and, you guys to do that. I was going to get our narrative mm-hmm. out there before people start thinking. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and we uh, the, the folks that uh, run the, our flagship station, our partners uh, at the time, uh, Big Play Ray Nelson was yeah. our our GM and and he wanted to have a meeting Sunday afternoon after church, um, and and we went up to the station and and man there was a ton of people there and a lot of them, again wanting to know what happened and you know the salespeople are there and and the programming people and management and uh, and Speedy and I were there and and they were they were concerned for you and Sherry and they also was concerned what our plan was right and I told I mean I think they were expecting something. Uh, uh, more profound. <laughs> and I said, look, Ray, here, here's the thing. I said, we're going to do what we always do. We're just going to be honest. I said, we're hurting. You guys are hurting. The audience is hurting. So they're going to want to talk about it. Let's let them talk about it. We need to talk about it. Let us talk about it. Let's just do what we always do. Let's be honest. Let's open the mics, open the phones, and tell people what we're thinking, and let's listen to what they're thinking, and that's that's what we did. Mm-hmm. So we'll come back. We'll continue to unpack that uh, because there's a lot that happened on those shows that were mind blowing, and 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 I'll tell you how it kind of was how I was starting to get some of that information, and then you guys can tell us what it was like to actually be doing those shows uh, when Rick and Bubba University the podcast continues. So we're looking back uh, to 14 years ago, uh, January the 19th, 2008, from a, a little different perspective, and that is, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're transitioning to a new company, and Rick and Bubba History, this show's 14 years old. Um, unfortunately, uh, Sherry and I, our youngest son, has just died in a, an accident at home, and, uh, and, and you know, you guys are 
We're saying, look, we're going to do what we always do. The show is about we're always honest, and we're going to come on Monday, and we're going to talk about it. So, so take me to that Monday. Well, and I don't know if Speedy wants to add anything about the Sunday yeah, okay, uh, meeting. Okay. Do, you, do you want to? Uh, well, I, I think uh, to, to what you just said, uh, management was a little taken back by, you know, what we had discussed, and that was, look, you know, we live our lives out, out on the air. I mean, our kids grow up. They're part of the show. And so, you know, to the audience, they're, they're our family too, which is part of our objective. We want you to feel that way. And so they need uh, an avenue to grieve and, and to, um, to show respect and, and, and all that. So let's give them that mouthpiece. Let's, let's just be honest and let's talk about the fact that we're hurting and, and that, you know, uh, we're upset and, 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 and we just kind of opened the show up for an honest discussion, and it, it just ended up being church for hours on end. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I think through Bubba's leadership, he was amazing. Uh, you know, our focus was if you truly want to honor the Burgess family, uh, you need to get your spiritual life in order. And And the worst thing you can do is go unchanged through this. And and that was our focus, which led to open air discussion, which led led to lives being changed. It was a it was a yeah. remarkable moment. Each and every segment, it was unbelievable. We would even look at each other and go, "What do we do? You know, do we just continue this on?" And it was, it was just like, "Yes." I mean, we were openly weeping on the air, and then we'd be laughing on the air. It was just it was just emotions were all over the place. But it was such a special moment. I I have to tell you the one thing, then you can tell me more details. So you know, people didn't really know. Do, do we check in with Rick and you know mm-hmm. and Sherry and and so obviously there's people that are trying to get in touch with you and they're all trying to take care of you, which is so cool. And uh, I can remember, I can't remember who it was, said, "Are you? Do you have any idea what's going on on the show right now?" And I said, "No, nah, I, I really don't." And they said, "It it's it there's a there's God is moving mm-hmm. on this show." And I remember hearing this word. People are pulling their cars over in the parking lot and repenting of their sin and confessing Jesus Christ as Lord. That's true. And, and That's true. I, I remember when I heard That's that, true. I was like, what? Well, it, it, it wasn't any one thing. Right. I it, mean, yeah. it, That's it, right. Was, it was people calling in, sharing their hearts. And let me tell you, it, it, if, if there was a monumental moment in this for me personally, it was – that Monday morning, I usually got to the studio about five, yeah. about, about what I normally do now. And I woke up probably at two o'clock. Mm. I was anxious, uh, concerned, wanted this to be done the right way. No, oh, yeah, a lot of responsibility there. And I got in my truck probably at three o'clock, and I drove around the city for two hours. And just praying, and you know, it, it it was an amazing time for me because I felt the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. in a way that the only time I felt it at that level is when I walked down the aisle right. to, to give my life to wow. Christ. So I don't know why it was that that much at that moment, other than I needed it, right. you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And by the time I got to work at five. I was looking forward to it instead of mm-hmm. dreading it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you just, we, we opened the mic. Speedy was a trooper uh, in this, and we just shared what had happened. We shared our thoughts about it happening, and we listened to people. And a lot of people had not heard, even to that point, yeah. even through TV interviews mm-hmm. and oh, newspaper yeah. stories and all that. Um, and... We, for several days, of course, well, I know we had the funeral on Tuesday. Um, it was uh, it was an amazing week, and we had uh, Scott Dawson came in for a little while. Mm-hmm. James Spann came in one day for a little while, both strong believers, and um, it, it, it was just amazing people sharing and talking about it, and it, it gave a lot of people an opportunity to talk about, you know, really— the bottom line with our faith physically is life and death. Yeah. And, uh, I think it, a lot of people tuned in that normally didn't listen. And I think that they heard a lot of things that, that made them think, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and 
we got to be prepared for that. I mean, each and every day. And and for me, it, it you know, we talked about the circuit breaker because it really makes you reevaluate and remember. And not that I had got off the path or forgotten about it, but it reminds you how precious every day is and how mm-hmm. precious your family is. And, you know, uh, there's moments I know during the pandemic, family was probably yeah. on your nerves. <laughs> right. bit, yeah, you right. know, right. Yeah. but, you know, you. You have that, and you think back and go, you know, this is this is precious. They they will, if the Lord tarries, there will be a day I'd give anything for this day back. Yeah. Just one more day, right? Mm-hmm. So I've got that gift. I need to use it. Yeah, and I think that's it, it, that's kind of where where I was too, because you know, being a kind of I was forty. Uh, Tyler's eleven. Uh, JC six. Uh, Reese is around three and a half. Uh, I'm not, you know, I've been a dad for a while, still a young dad, you know, and you get caught up and and you look up and it's Friday again, and then it's Friday again, and then you're at a ball game and then it's Friday again. And you get caught up at so much in the worldly aspect of things that you lose track of what's truly important. And that's one thing this did for me. And I know living that out on the air with, with Bubba and it wasn't just us, Don Juan, Christopher Columbus, Ryan Greenwood, it was a group effort, but it, it helped me realize that. Um, I'm too wrapped up in, in the worldly aspect of things. And, you know, if you, if you really want to be uh, a father that, that, that is pointed in the right direction, you need to make sure your kids are warriors for Christ and not yeah. either they hit a home run or a triple or, right. you know, score a goal or, or get a touchdown. That's not what's important. And it really made me slow down and bring the family together and, and, and talk about what's truly important in life. Yeah, and, and I, I had the same experience. It was just, and, and even now, fourteen years later, if I see myself drifting back to the world, I'm like, you cannot go through this and 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 go back to who, how you were before. Because I did, did y'all start getting any questions like, all right, so you've done the first day, all these people are calling in, and now you're back on on Tuesday. Did you just kind of follow the the lead of the spirit of the, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah just, I mean, exactly? Are we did. just going to keep on going? It, 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 was management ever like, are y'all going to do anything <laughs> different than this? Well, or? the uh, let me say from the management standpoint, very supportive. Yeah, yes, very. Actually, they're very worried about you guys. Yeah. Very. and but they they have a job to do, and and you know they're asking questions to us. Uh, will, will Rick ever come back? Will Rick come back when? When do you think? He'd take all the time he wants, but do you have any idea? And I said, no, we really don't. Uh, I said, but I, I know beyond being a professional, which you are, and Rick loves doing this. This is what he loves to do. Yeah. He will be back at some point, um, and he'll be back better than ever. Um, but I don't, I don't know when that time is. But I think, you know, that week, I think, there was something going on. There was a real revival type spirit. Yeah. Um, and I mean with a passion. And it wasn't a sermon. It wasn't a prayer. It wasn't a word. You could just tell the Holy Spirit was moving. Mm-hmm. I know. And, and all we had to do was just hang on. I, yeah. think, we, I think everybody was reali- realizing how much we really need God. Yeah. yeah, amen to that. Because when you get down to where he's all you got, Mm-hmm. You, you realize he's all you really need. And, That's right. And yeah. it's, uh, you know, I've told you too, I, I think when you hear about things that happen to people, you try to imagine sometimes, you know, in those quiet places, how would I feel if it happened to me? When you, you know, you hear of, of someone's parent dying, you think, well, what, how would I feel when one of my parents yeah. died? Or yeah. which, mm-hmm. which one would die would I feel different if it right. was my mom or my, you know yeah, what I mean? You yeah, just kind of, yeah, yeah. I think you, you think about that. And I've told you many times I, that I can always put myself in that position and kind of see what I would feel like. It, it was just impossible for me to put myself in that position. I just couldn't, my brain yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't mm-hmm. function with it. So yeah. I, I couldn't imagine what you were having to deal with and go through it. And then we had the, the funeral on Tuesday and you did a wonderful job. You got up and, and delivered a message, wow. and it was. I, I don't see how you did it. I couldn't have. I don't think I could have stood up, much less I, said I had, what you said. Well, I, I was. I was sitting there, and my intention was to thank everybody for all their support because everybody was so good to us, and sit down. And my pastor even had. He gave me 
about two years ago, he said, here's the message I never delivered, and he gave it to me. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I, I get up, and before I know it, supernaturally, I start talking about what I think God, I guess, was teaching me during all this mm-hmm. and just relaying it to the, you know, I guess there was, what, around 200-and-something people yeah, was, that came or whatever. Full church, know. whatever it would hold. And, uh, and Well, it's actually right because it was 200-and-something people yeah. made a decision for Christ, <clears> so there was probably that place holds about, you know, um, about nearly two thousand people, so I guess there was probably what I don't know. Well, Rick, it, was it was standing room. Yeah, yeah, it was full. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, but two hundred something people made decisions that day because God had everybody's attention, and as y'all said, He was moving, and and we were all listening. Mm-hmm. And uh, I can remember, like you said about not being able to do it. I sat down, and I was okay, and then they put a picture of Bronner up on the big screen, and I looked at Sherry and I said, I, I'm out. I'm not. I, I said I can't. Mm-mm, I'm out. And she said, "Of course, no problem." And then I said, "But I need. I need to get up and thank everybody." And so, I get up, and it's just like that night y'all walked me into the hospital. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, when y'all walked me in that hospital, same thing happened at that church that day. My feet. I don't know how to describe this. When you're literally being carried by the Holy Spirit, and I, I'm, I'm. And this is not. This is straight up. I couldn't feel my feet touch the floor. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like they weren't really touching the floor. They never really came to rest and pushed back. And I felt that going in the hospital because, I mean, what are you about to do? You're about to meet, see your wife in this situation. And then that, that day at the memorial service. So when we come back, I'll tell you something interesting about that, too, and it'll tell you kind of the, the part of history, and then we'll kind of uh, wrap up uh, when uh, Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, continues. So when we got to the memorial service at the time, it was me, you, and Speedy, Don Juan DeMarco Williams, Ryan Greenwood, who did IT, and then Christopher Columbus mm-hmm. did what Adler does now. Yeah. Well, he, he got word to me that he was going to come and videotape the memorial service so we would have it. Okay. So I was thankful for that. And that's all I ever heard about that. Well, when it was all over and God – gave us all a message. Well, YouTube had just been invented. If you look, YouTube was invented the year that Bronner was born. So he says, there's there's this thing called YouTube. Now, at that time, you can only do 10 minutes. He said, I'll put this in three 10-minute segments because the message was 30 minutes or something like that. Mm-hmm. And he said, the audience that couldn't come wants to see it. Do you care if I just put it on YouTube? I didn't know what he was talking about. Right. And, and I was like, well, yeah, I get it. Can people see it? Yeah. And then he and Ryan got together on how to get it to the people. And if you look at God working, now keep in mind, the numbers then were not as big as they are now. So, you you know, we weren't playing in the league we play now. But that video went out. And for that week, it was the number one most viewed video in the world. That's right. Because That's what? Incredible. What? Because a little boy died and everybody's, is this his daddy? Right. What? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so it, there's something about this kind of trauma that draws us. I wish it wasn't that way. Right. But it, it gets our attention. I know C.S. Lewis said it's God's megaphone for a sleeping world. So you guys go back on. So you, you're on the day of the memorial service. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then what happens after that? Well, I mean, it, it just kind of kept building, I think, after seeing – what you said and and a lot of people seeing what you said and the more that saw what you said (laughs) right uh you know more people want to talk about it and it it really you know it really was an easy week i mean Mm -hmm. when the holy spirit is piling up the wood and lights the fire all (laughs) Mm -hmm. you got to do is feel the heat you know yeah yeah and um it uh it 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 went good and i know you told us or or i think maybe you'd call the show thursday and said that you'd be back on monday yeah and uh you know i think that just mapping that out made the the, the parent company feel better and, yeah. and but they were like is it too soon he can take another week take right. a month no, they, you know? yeah, they, right. they, they, they were nothing but good to all of us and, and, i have no complaint with how and, they and again it. i i told i said look th- this is what rick loves this is r- what rick does let him do this this is what he needs to do uh and if he didn't he'd tell you mm-hmm. uh just just do what he wants to do and and it'll all be fine and and you know personally too it, it gave us an opportunity at home to talk about this. Uh, I think Hunter was 10 at the time. Yeah. Caitlin was eight or nine and she had just accepted Jesus as her Lord and savior. 
and um, it, it got us a chance to sit down and we talked about it and we talked about Job and we talked about, you know, asking questions the right way, kind of what we talked about earlier. And uh, it gave me a chance yeah. to, to really witness to my son and he ended up accepting Jesus mm. as his Lord and Savior. Yeah. Um, and and I told you earlier, if I had not gone to – my dad had 10 brothers and sisters, so you're talking about aunts and uncles, 20. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. a lot of them were passing away when I was a kid. So going to that many funerals as a kid – it makes you start asking questions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where, where is Uncle So and So? Where is it? Yeah. You know, um, because when you see a body get laid in the ground, it's kind of disturbing when yeah. you're a kid. Yeah, it is. And and I think a lot of times we we shield kids from that, but it really is a good thing for them to be asking those questions. It is, mm-hmm. and to be seeking those answers. So, um, you know, it, it uh, personally for me and our family. Um, we we lost a son temporarily. Mm-hmm. We gained a son eternal. Amen. Amen. And yeah. you know that was I was always That's appreciative huge. for that. I, yeah. I hated that oh, that yeah. you guys paid that price for that. <clears throat> well, but it, yeah. uh, it 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 like many other people, it made a, it made a difference in their life. Yeah. Well, it, well, yeah. And, and the reason why is, but when you what you just said again, it just happened again. Even though I knew that, I tell people all the time when you tell us that this was the marker for anybody, you, your children, somebody you knew. I tell them there's nothing that brings more healing and for us to see God's purpose in all of it. Yeah. Anytime you hear, oh, well, that was one, that was one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, and and I know um, for me, Bubba touched on it, but um, the the memorial service, the funeral on Tuesday, it changed the narrative. I mean, it it was all the same. Monday, Tuesday, it, it was one type of show. Come Wednesday, it was still the same type of show, but then then the talk was, um, all right, you know, y- y'all talk about this God thing all the time. Let's see how he reacts now. And then when you got up and God worked through you to deliver the message you delivered, everybody was like, whoa. You know, the 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 the, the way you and Sherry uh, handled yourself and, and, and your, your, uh, your testimony and your example of faith just I know me as as a father and and I know Adler touched on it earlier. You 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 two were a great example for uh, Terry and I on on uh, what it truly like is like to be a, a couple united in faith. And it was just a it was to me it was just like it was I, I hate to say this it was almost like a pep rally of my soul to yeah. s- to sit yeah. that sit no, there and was. watch that because yeah. it gave me motivation to go. What are you doing sitting here all you know? feeling sorry for yourself, go in there Wednesday. Did you just see what that man did? You know, get get in there, do a good job. And there's a, there's a lot of gifts that a lot of people have. Some some people have amazing gifts where they can, they know the right thing to say and, and comforting someone. You know, I, I feel like one thing I, I tried to do, and Bubba and I talked about it, is the one way we can show love to you and Sherry is to, to, to take work and, and and go. We got this. Yeah. You, you don't worry about yeah. it. We've got this covered. And uh, you come back whenever you want to come back. And and there was no timeline. It was yeah. just when it. Well, you're going to come back when you call us and say you're ready. Uh, and so, um, it just it was just it was an amazing week uh, of just um, watching God work through uh, the audience and through us. I mean, the whole time I'm sitting there at uh, at the desk, uh, we would go to break. Bubba and I would just look look at each other and go, Wow, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Here's some amazing this is a, stories. Yeah. And, and it's funny because that is a marker. You're talking about markers. It, that's the marker on don't, don't, not sweating the little things in life yeah. uh, that Terry and I will we, throw back to that a bunch on, you know, if something is impacting our day, it's like, is it is this a big deal? Because I can no, tell you right. what I can tell you yeah. what a big deal is. Yeah. Let, that, let's go back 14 years. I, yeah, I tell people that, the peace that that brings. So it's been great revisiting this with you guys. I, I hope it wasn't too difficult. I just felt like this is one part of it that we have these conversations, but the audience benefits from it too. And what you guys have done for me and, and for Sherry and for our family and, and to know that I can't imagine what it would have been like. Cause I remember sitting in the little farmhouse, you know, we, we told that story on the air this week, Sherry and I had moved down to this little farm that we had just gotten in October. And had never even been down there. We're still waiting on the furniture and some kind people. Back to kindness again. Yeah. I called them up and said, has my wife picked out everything for that little house? And they said, yeah. I said, here's the American Express card. Would y'all go put it in there? And they said, of course. So we get down there after the memorial service, and it's Ready all, to go, the, right? all the furniture's mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. Just incredibly kind people. But I remember thinking before I was going back, I was sitting in that chair, and I thought I had made a step out. I was like, eh. 
you know, maybe I'm going back too quick. I don't think, and I remember saying to, you know, out loud in that little house sitting in the chair, I looked at that chair yesterday and I said, Lord, I can't, I can't do it. Uh, I just, I need more time. And I, I just, I just can't pull this off. And I just, again, in that spirit, I heard, now you're ready. Your problem has never been that you're not strong enough. As a matter of fact, your problem has been you've never been weak enough. And I have refined you to the point that you are so weak that you're asking me to put your shoes on. And I thought to myself, but on to you guys, as I stepped out under the authority of the Lord, knowing that I was driving to that studio, I can't imagine what it would have been like to have to go back alone, to go back and walk in, and there is the family. There's the other family, uh, the guys on the show. So you guys have played a major role uh, in uh, in this, and I, I just wanted to ask you for the first time in front of an audience, tell me what it was like from your standpoint because you did an outstanding job. Well, it, it, it was a blessing to all yeah, of us yeah. to be a part of that. Uh, yeah, again, we hate for the earthly loss, which is temporary. Sure. But uh, there was so much good that come out of it and still coming out of it. Yeah. And I know you've heard the voice too, and I have when we think about it and we ask those questions that, that sometimes you're afraid to ask, but mm-hmm. his grace is sufficient. Amen. It mm-hmm. is. So, uh, and, and if you're there and this is new to you, uh, Sherry did write a book, took her five years to do it. It's a great book mm-hmm. about pain and suffering and the things that Bubba was just talking about and Speedy. It's available wherever there's books. It's called Bronner, A Journey to Understand. It's also on audio if you'd like to hear her actually take you through it, which is pretty powerful. And, of course, uh, the memorial service, you can go to BurgessMinistries.com. Uh, somebody finally took those three 10 minute segments and put them into one segment. So, <laughs> uh, after YouTube started allowing that. So, there's all kinds of resources. And, of course, if we can be of any help to you, any of us, please reach out. We'd, we'd love to help you. Uh, so thank you for being with us uh, on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast.